If you've ever walked through a medieval church roof or an old European barn and wondered why the beams are still solid after centuries of damp winters, insects and neglect, the answer is not luck. It is smoke. Not surface charring, not decorative staining, but a deliberate, slow exposure of fresh timber to wood smoke that fundamentally changed how the wood aged. This technique was once so common that no one bothered to write it down. Builders assumed everyone knew it. When industrial sawmills, kilns and chemical preservatives arrived, the knowledge faded. What we lost was a natural preservation method that made timber harder, drier, insect-resistant and dramatically longer-lasting. How medieval builders discovered smoke as a preservative, not just a byproduct. Medieval carpenters noticed something practical. Roof beams above hearths lasted longer than ground-level posts. Smoke-blackened rafters resisted rot even in damp halls where rain and condensation were constant problems. Over generations, builders learned to harness this effect intentionally. Fresh-cut oak, pine, ash or chestnut was stacked in smoke houses, great halls or enclosed sheds where low fires burned for weeks or months. The goal was not heat, but saturation. Cool smoke crept deep into the wood fibres, carrying resins, phenols and acids that altered the timber at a chemical level. what smoke actually does to timber at the molecular level. Wood smoke contains antimicrobial compounds that inhibit fungi, bacteria and insects. Phenols and creosote-like substances bond with cellulose, making the wood less digestible to pests. At the same time, slow smoking drives out free moisture without cracking the timber the way kiln drying does. The result is wood that shrinks less, warps less, and resists decay far better than untreated lumber. Medieval builders did not know the chemistry, but they knew the outcome. Smoked wood lasted. Why smoke-treated timber perform better than early chemical treatments? Before industrial preservatives, alternatives were limited. Tar, pitch or lime washes were messy and often superficial. Smoke penetrated deeply and evenly. Unlike modern pressure-treated wood, smoke timber remained breathable, allowing moisture to escape instead of trapping it inside. This prevented internal rot, which is the silent killer of wooden structures. Medieval roofs often failed from stone collapse or fire, not timber decay. How the process was done in practice, not theory. Freshly cut logs were trimmed, but not squared. Bark was often left on during smoking to slow drying. The wood was stacked horizontally above a smouldering fire, fueled by hardwood, peat or green branches. Flames were avoided. Builders wanted dense, cool smoke that lingered. The structure was kept enclosed to trap smoke while allowing minimal airflow. Over several weeks, the timber darkened, hardened and developed a distinctive scent that insects avoided. Only after smoking was the wood shaped into beams, posts or planks. So, why did this method disappear from common use? The industrial age, you see, prized speed and uniformity. Kiln drying could process timber in just a few days instead of months. Chemical preservatives promised instant protection. No smoke, no soot and, well, hardly any labour. As open hearths vanished from homes, so did those smoke-saturated interiors. The result was cleaner buildings, but, unfortunately, weaker wood. 
Many 20th century structures now fail in just decades, while medieval beams still endure. Now, how does this forgotten method apply directly to modern survival and building needs? Well, if you are building an off-grid cabin, a timber frame shed, or even fence posts meant to last, the medieval smoke trick is still viable. You can smoke small logs or boards in a simple shed using a pit fire or a metal drum with restricted airflow. Be sure to use hardwood or green wood to produce heavy smoke rather than flame. Rotate the timber every few days to ensure even exposure. After several weeks, the wood will be noticeably lighter, darker and, you know, more resistant to moisture. Right, let's look at some practical examples where smoke timber still excels today. Smoke posts buried in the soil? Well, they last much longer than untreated posts, because insects and fungi, they really struggle to colonize them. Roof rafters treated in this way do a fine job resisting condensation rot, especially in cabins that don't have vapor barriers. Tool handles, ladders and outdoor furniture, these all gain durability without the need for synthetic chemicals. And even small-scale applications, such as smoking replacement beams over a fire pit, can, you know, dramatically extend their lifespan. So, what does medieval smoke preservation teach us about patience and material respect? Well, this method demanded time, observation, and a fair bit of restraint. Medieval builders, they understood that true durability was created slowly. They worked with natural processes rather than forcing them along. Smoke, you see, was not waste. It was a tool. Timber wasn't rushed. It was quite carefully prepared. Now, why does reclaiming this knowledge matter today? As modern builders, you know, rediscover natural materials, smoke timber really does offer a proven alternative to chemical dependency. It's sustainable, it's repairable, and, importantly, it's effective. It also reconnects us to a lineage of builders who managed to solve long-term problems with a bit of short-term inconvenience and a great deal of long-term wisdom. If you value deep historical knowledge that still works in the real world, do subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this with fellow history enthusiasts and survival-minded builders and help keep these lost techniques alive right where they belong.